Good morning, Pathways. You know, one of the things that I absolutely love about Christmas are nativity scenes. Here's a picture of one that, that's similar to, to something we put up every year at our home. And like you just saw in that video, Jesus was set in a humble manger, his only son given as a gift for all those who who really want peace to fill our hearts. You know why I love nativity scenes? Because they are so peaceful. You know, like I said earlier in service, none of us like to wait. But if we're going to wait, then what we truly want while we wait, or maybe, just maybe what God wants to do in us while we wait, is to renew our peace. You know, this year, unlike any other year, we need peace like we've never needed it before. So many unknowns, so much uncertainty. We need God's peace. Thankfully, the promise of a much needed blessing appears throughout the Christmas story. Used more than 400 times in scripture, it's a word woven throughout the prophecies of Jesus coming as a special gift to us from God. That word is peace. In speaking about our Savior, the prophet Isaiah recorded these words in Isaiah chapter 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince, Prince of Peace. Likewise, we read that on the night Jesus was born, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Surely the promise of this peace is a welcome one, especially at Christmas when there is so much that tries to create chaos. Doesn't it seem like as soon as we're able to, to settle down, to, to quiet our spirit, there's some other request or demand, burden or emergency that just rushes in and stirs up chaos. How can we renew our peace in a season like this one? That's a question that I want to look at today as we've been discussing these four words in our Christmas series called Renew. We've been looking at hope and joy, peace and love. And this weekend, I want to talk to you about the word peace. Now, if you're like me, Christmas is a time of agitation and anxiety. <clears throat> and you know what? You're not alone. I'm like that, a lot of us are like that, because we tend to think if we just had enough money or the right connections, the holidays and really much of life would be much, much easier. Especially during Christmas though, many of us, we look to wealth and possessions as a pathway to peace. Uh, we think that, that if, if we could just have the next newest thing, like a tech toy or, or a, a new set of golf clubs or a designer handbag, then, then we would be happy. And if, if we could only buy our loved ones those perfect gifts, that would bring harmony in our households. However, and you know this, but listen, worldly things can never fill our emptiness, give us worth or restore broken relationships. This is the inherent problem with the world's definition of peace. See, it's based on our limited finite resources and therefore offers only temporary results. It's a momentary solution that cannot reach soul deep and provide the peace that our, our hearts, our rustless hearts need to cure our anxiety. Parents, listen, parents, that's why you should never give your kids everything that they want at Christmas time. Because one day they will thank you for not giving them everything that they wanted. They'll look around and they'll see their friends who not only gave them everything they wanted on Christmas, but throughout the year. And they're going to see that their friends, well, they're kind of messed up, kind of spoiled. And then your son or daughter, they're going to come back to you and they're going to thank you for teaching them what is truly what is truly important, which, which really is the key principle that, that peace and fulfillment come through Christ, not from anything that this world offers. So as Christmas approaches, what can you do to renew peace? 
How can you maintain a genuine peace despite everything that is going on in our world, not including the season's activities and pressures? And what can you do to preserve peace within yourself and, and, and with others around you, and most importantly, with your heavenly Father? Well, Jesus shows us the path to peace. He taught, he taught us this, that we could have this profound inner peace even in chaotic circumstances. Listen to what he told his disciples. John chapter 14 and verse 27, here's what we read. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give it as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace that Jesus gives is not as the world gives gifts like at Christmas time. Jesus gives the supernatural gift of peace anytime you and I choose to walk with Jesus as our Lord and Savior. This peace is his peace. It belongs to Jesus. Notice Jesus said, my peace. Well, what did he do with this peace? Well, he gives it to you and me, his followers. Why? So that our hearts don't have to be troubled or afraid. So the question becomes, how can you receive and be renewed in the peace of God that is a supernatural gift and calms our hearts? Well, first, you have to understand the peace of God originates in our reconciliation to the Father. See, entering into a relationship with God through Jesus marks the trail for our ability to experience and walk in peace. This is how the Apostle Paul describes God's peace. Philippians chapter four, he says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, what's interesting is that the word for peace in the original language of the New Testament means to bind together. See, when you trust Jesus as your savior, he binds you to himself for all eternity. So no matter what happens here on earth, you can be absolutely confident that your right relationship with God, and you can be assured that you have a home in heaven. But equally as important, you can also realize that we, that you and I can renew our peace because we are bounded together with Christ. And when we obey his word, it enables us to experience and renew our peace that is from him and for our good. Listen to what Jesus says over in John chapter 16. He says, I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. See, in this world, you're gonna have trouble. Jesus wasn't a liar, but he said, take heart because I have overcome the world. When you and I learn to walk in a strong, growing relationship with Jesus, the storms of life that try to knock us off our boat do not upset the calm assurance that we are bound to Christ in his life. And see, when we can dwell in his presence, knowing that God is in control and understanding that nothing, no thing touching our lives outside of his authority and wisdom and love can take place. What a thought, what a thought. Now earlier, we saw how hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, Isaiah recorded those four titles of the coming Christ child. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. You remember that? Well, Jesus is called the prince of peace for a very important reason. Let me tell you why. See, the term peace, it means commander, leader, ruler, or captain. The one who overcomes all obstacles to accomplish his purpose. In other words, this prince, our Jesus, whatever your circumstance may be, Jesus is always and completely able and willing to help you. And as a believer, you can calmly and joyfully trust him because you know that the one who is best able to give you victory will never leave you and never forsake you because you have peace with him. You are bound to him. Now, Emily and the worship team, they're gonna come in a moment and they're gonna sing this absolutely gorgeous song called Hush. It's a song that I believe will, will quiet your heart and give you an opportunity to renew 
your peace in the wonder of what God has done in sending his son, Jesus Christ. Afterwards, I'm gonna come back and lead us in a closing prayer. But before the team comes, I wanna read a few of God's promises for peace in your life. Something that God put on my heart this week, just to share with you. And so maybe you wanna write these down and as an action step to this message, you can go ahead and in your chair time, reflect upon God's promises for peace in your life. So let's take a look at a couple of these scriptures. First, Psalm 4.8, it says this, in peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. I'm praying that you get good rest, good sleep, that the blessing of peace hits you while you rest. Here's the next verse. It says this in Psalm 29, 11, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. I am praying this week that you would have the blessing of peace in your heart. Here's the next one. Isaiah 26, three says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I am praying that your minds would be steadfast because you trust in God. I am praying this promise over your life. And then finally, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. This is how Paul closes the letter to the Thessalonians. He says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. I love that, at all times and in every single way, may the Lord of peace give you this kind of peace. His peace is ever present. His peace comes at all times, in all places, in all ways, and meets every stress, every form of anxiety, every fear that you have. God's supernatural blessing of peace can renew, can renew you, can renew us as a church. He says, now may the Lord be with you all. And that's my prayer, that God would be with you all, that he would just calm your hearts. And as you listen to the words of this song, that he would rush in and renew peace inside of you.